Hi everybody, Steve here. This is another video on the series of making generative art. This is going to be an unusual one. I just want to talk for a little bit about being a generative artist. We're almost halfway through the course and you should be working on art by now. So I wanted to say a few words. There won't be any coding in this video. First thought is make art that is all you. I show my art a lot in these videos, but that doesn't mean that I think my art is super awesome or that your art should look like my art. I show it to you because I know what the functions and techniques are used in creating that art. So it's just an example of what's possible with whatever I'm teaching in that moment. Generative art can look like all sorts of things. You need to make whatever art you want to make. Also, it's fine to try to recreate what other artists have done as an exercise or as a beginning. I've had a couple of projects come from me trying to recreate what other artists have done. But you need to come up with your own take on what's been done so it's fresh and expresses your own voice. Comment two, make bad art. Don't be afraid to make bad art. You have to make bad art first in order to make good art. Even if you get good at making gen art, you still need to make bad art because bad art happens when you're trying new things. You need to mash things together, play around, be extreme and radical. If you only do things you know you're good at, then you're not stretching yourself enough. Other people don't need to like your art for it to be worth making. Don't let anyone tell you that what you're doing isn't worth doing. If you like what you're doing, that's all that matters. And don't compare yourself and your art to the art of someone who's been doing this for years. Comment three. This is similar to comment two. Share your work. I recommend following artists you like on Twitter and other social media. There's also a generative discord and a couple of reddits for generative art. So I'll leave links in the video description for that. Share your work in process with other artists on social media and ask for feedback. The generative art community is very supportive of each other, especially beginners. And I've had a couple of projects take some wonderful turns from feedback that I've gotten online. NFT art. I want to say some things about that. Uh, you might consider buying NFTs, especially Tezos projects on FX Hash. It's a nice way to support other artists. Then you can post your mints on Twitter and tag the artist. That's another nice way to support artists. If you want to sell NFTs, I totally support that. Just try not to be too hopeful. I've seen a lot of projects sell like two or three mints and then that can feel like a gut punch, but it's part of the process. If you're thinking you want to make NFTs for a living, I'm not gonna tell you that can't be done, but it's a bit like saying you wanna be a movie star. It's possible, but it's a big challenge. I would guess that there are maybe 200 people in the entire world who are actually earning a living solely from making generative art. If you think you could be one of those people, then go for it, but don't quit your day job. If I look at the earnings for my projects and compare it to the number of hours I put into those projects, I would guess I've made maybe $2 an hour. So as a business, it's pretty lousy. But as a hobby that occasionally pays for dinner, it's super awesome. So make generative art because it's fun. That's all I wanted to say. I'm done with my philosophizing and advice giving, at least for now. In the next video, we'll be creating functions. If you like this video, you can give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell, etc. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.